Great Scott. Great Scott. Great Scott. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Great Scott. I'm Scotty V. Thanks for watching. As you can see, I have a couple new items on my person at this moment. This is an awesome Superman shirt. It's actually DC licensed, where he's surrounded by zombies. He has blood stains on him. He has bloody handprints on him. He's uh, apparently in some sort of a struggle, although... Uh, there was a Batman one next to it where Batman was in almost the exact same pose. They weren't grabbing him, I think, because the person drawing it realized that if they were grabbing him, Batman, who was just a guy in a suit, to, to remind you, in case you didn't remember how I felt about that, um, would be in some serious trouble, whereas Superman could just wade through the zombies and take them all out with his heat vision. They're dead, right? They're not actually living beings, so he wouldn't necessarily have a problem with taking them out. Uh, but anyway, it's a cool shirt. They uh, have it at Journeys, so if you're interested, go and uh, check it out. Um, and over here we have our uh, Superman 3 album, for those of you out there who know what that is. I won't explain it, but I will explain it for the people who don't know. Uh, you know, uh, back in the day when us old people wanted to listen to uh, music, a soundtrack from a movie, for instance, uh, we would uh, take out these big giant vinyl records. They were circular and they're about that large and you play them on a turntable which has a little needle and it's all scratchy. And There are people out there who consider themselves aficionados who like that scratchy, buzzy, kind of not quality sound and say somehow it's better than the digital sound we have now or CDs or anything like that. Uh, I'm not one of those people but uh, I received this from a cast member in my current production of Les Mis where I'm playing Javert. Uh, the Valjean to my <laughs> Javert gave me this. He found it uh, in a gallery of sound, which is a music store nearby, and uh, said, I know who would like this, and he got it for me. So, for those of you who think the world is just full of scum and villainy and horrible people, there you have it. Um, I got an album from somebody, so that proves everything. Um, <laughs> and, of course, it's an album from one of the best superhero movies of all time, Superman 3, starring Richard Pryor and... Uh, uh, with some scenes that had Christopher Reeve in it. Uh, there are a lot of scenes in the movie that, even though they, they really did some horrible things with it and they clearly wanted to make it a comedy, I feel like there were some cool bits in there that if they were in a different movie or if they were a part of a serious Superman endeavor, I think they would have been great. You know, uh, First of all, the, the, the little phone booth at the beginning where he, he takes pictures and this kid sees them and, and uh, he could give away his secret identity. And, of course, that's a com comedic bit again, but it's almost not so over the top that it, it could be okay in another movie. Uh, that's one of, that's, that's, I love that about the opening. The rest of the opening is just, uh, I don't even know <laughs> what's going on. Uh, there's bombs, there's penguins, there's people falling into holes, there's a blind guy walking around. It's a lot of slapstick and not really a lot that has much to do with Superman or why this movie is even here or anything along those lines. And then there's the car rescue where the guy's drowning in his car because he ran into a fire hydrant. It's absurd, but for some reason I really like the rescue, except for the fact that Superman seems to struggle with tearing off the sunroof. He's... Uh, I mean, he's Superman, but if, uh, I don't know. He can't get his hands on the... Uh, 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 then he finally gets it open and gets the guy out, and, of course, everybody cheers. And he flies off, and then it's time for us to go check out Richard Pryor and watch him do some stuff like we do for the rest of the movie. Um, and I guess that was at a time where Richard Pryor was huge, and uh, I guess Canon Films had, had bought the rights to, uh, uh, you know, uh, distribute Superman movies, so... They were trying to, ooh, my hair, it's all fluffy and staticky, it's everywhere. They, I think they were trying to gain momentum, and, and by having Richard Pryor in it, they thought maybe they'd bring in a new audience or, or whatever. Um, uh, <laughs> and the other part, obviously, I think any fan would agree, that I really enjoy is the junkyard scene where he separates from himself and Clark Kent fights the evil dirty Superman with the scruff and the mud and dirt all over his uniform. It's kind of like a blackened tar type uniform. And he's, you know, before he goes to the junkyard, he's, he's beaning peanuts off the breaking bottles behind the bartender. And no one's doing anything, of course, because it's Superman. 
what can they say? I mean, people run out of there, you know. He's like, get out of here! Get out! <laughs> they, of course, run. What are you looking at? He was looking at him through the window because they can't believe that Superman's doing this thing. And another point where Christopher Reeve is just uh, wowing people with his with his acting chops. You know, one of the biggest things people talk about is how his differentiation between Clark Kent and Superman is so great. Um, and he is this physical actor who can be physically imposing in the uniform and be Superman, but at the same time, he can put on those glasses and be clumsy and meek and mild and stumbling around. And while I have expressed that I don't want to see a Superman movie with any more bumbling Clark, um, it was a great way to kind of say, well, this is how people don't know that Clark is Superman. And, and of course, watching Christopher Reeve do it is... I don't know that there that there'd be any other way to show that any better. He did a fantastic job, and then in Superman three, when he gets to be the dark Superman affected by the uh, manufactured kryptonite, uh, it's just another great performance. And then when he fights Kent in the uh, obviously it's all in his mind, so <clears throat> we already know that going in. So if you think about that, it's not as cool because it didn't really happen that way, but the way they put it together and, and the way they do decide to show you the battle that's going on between him and himself is just a really cool thing. And then at the end when he wins and tears open that shirt and it's just blistering clean and red and shiny and bold and it looks fantastic and the music starts and he flies off to go fix some of the things he had done that were wrong during his tenure as evil Superman. It's just it's just so great. It's so dramatic. And I, I hate that it's in this Richard Pryor um, comedy slapstick movie. But uh, and then there's Brad and there's Lana and there's little Ricky and there's the, 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 the farming equipment that almost runs him over. There's some really cool things in there. I just there was a lot of then there's a lotto machine with Lois out in the tropics and she comes in all orange and she's just looking, you know I think it's Margot Kidder at her most um, insane or mental or something that they could only get her for a few minutes so she's not really a star of the movie she just kind of comes in at the end and you know it's it, it, there's a lot of insanity going on but I also like the lake rescue where the the the, the chemical fire is going on in the labs and. Superman, you know, where's the nearest lake? You know, oh, it's that way. And he flies off and he freezes the lake and he comes back and it's like raining for 40 minutes even though it was only a, a layer of the top of the lake. But it's still really cool and the music and everything. It's, you know, that John Williams music is, obviously, it's, I think it's irreplaceable. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see when Man of Steel comes out in June what uh, we actually get and what kind of music. Will there be a... Uh, a discernible theme song because with Batman there really isn't you know in the Nolan uh, Batman films and with Spider-Man there really is there's kind of something there but it's not it's not something you can walk around your house dun, 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 you know there's nothing that sticks with you I don't think you know maybe if you're a huge fan and you've heard the soundtrack a hundred times you can pick out musical themes and beats and strains and and maybe there is a melody that I'm missing but uh <clears throat> There's definitely nothing like the John Williams theme in, in Superman, and uh, even in a horrible movie like Superman 3, you know, you, you show Superman do something great, and you play that music, and it's it's really hard to beat. So something else to kind of look forward to with anticipation, but also with some worry as to uh, how we're going to get over this, that, that whole John Williams thing. But uh, just a couple of my thoughts, nothing in particular this week, just wanted to throw that out there for you, and this album got me thinking about it. Uh, so uh, I'm going to have a hard time with Quest for Peace, though. I'm really not sure there's any scenes in there worth saving. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And remember, always look up in the sky.